Now on Sunrise and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, the U.S. and Venezuela have agreed to a prisoner swap that will free 10 Americans. We have the details of the agreement. And a landmark decision from Colorado Supreme Court has disqualified Trump from appearing on the state's 2024 ballot. We'll tell you what's next for the decision as it moves to the Supreme Court. Plus, the iconic numerals for the New Year's Eve countdown celebration have arrived in New York City. We'll tell you how you can get a photo op before they get installed on Times Square. And we're going to have a big uptick in rain right ahead of the holidays coming over the weekend and more. Another cool front as well. We'll take a look at that in the weather coming up. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning. I'm Carolina Astrain. And I'm Parker Cox. And today it's the 21st day of December 2023. The time is now, let's see, it's six, about almost 6.32 on our Thursday morning. And it's National Crosswords, Crosswords Puzzle Day. It's a cool day. It is a cool day. It's a very interesting day. It's a kind of down low one. Do you do the crossword? Uh, I'm more of a Sudoku guy. A Sudoku guy. Yeah, I'm really good at Sudoku. I'm <laughs> really quick with it, too. I like to do the word search. Oh, word search is really word cool, search. too. I always find those uh, when I was like in a little lobby and sitting there for hours just trying to find words. So. <laughs> well, Parker, what are you finding in our forecast today? In our forecast today, I'm finding perhaps some rain. Carolina might want to bring your umbrellas oh. today because you might see a couple ice hooded showers out there this afternoon. We'll take a look at that in just a few moments because if you're waking up with us right now, or if you're just tuning in, look at a live look at Eastern Victoria where it looks like, I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's a raindrop on the camera or not because we did get a couple showers or about an hour or so ago, probably around a little bit around our area, but nothing crazy, just a few weeks week showers out there right now we'll take a look at that radar in just a second 61 out there starting the day here in the crossroads both the dew point at 59 just two degrees off got a humidity of 93 percent so a little humid out there but we're only expecting a couple maybe a little bit of dew kind of forming on your windshield not really expecting any fog out there this morning as you really start seeing fog at about 95 percent or higher let's take a look at the relative humidities for the rest of their area here of our area here goliad might be goliad and Quero as well y'all might see Maybe some really thin fog starting to form out there. Wharton as well in Bay City, y'all are above that 95% mark. So maybe if y'all do see any fog, it'll be really thin and it'll be out of our area by sunrise later in just probably about an hour or so. But as so you take a look at the radar here, like I said, pretty quiet out there. We're expecting, like I said, those showers to become more widespread going into the afternoon hours today and tonight as well. And take a look at that and more in just a few more moments. Back to Carolina. Thank you, Parker. The White House confirms the U.S. has reached an agreement with Venezuela for a prisoner swap, which includes 10 Americans. A statement from President Biden confirms that 10 Americans detained in Venezuela are coming home. That includes six wrongfully detained Americans, 20 political prisoners, and notably a fugitive from the United States known as Fat Leonard. In return, the U.S. is releasing Colombian businessman Alex Saab, a President Maduro ally who's accused of bribery and money laundering $350 million. We'll go to Washington for the latest on the deal later on Sunrise. Colorado's Supreme Court has disqualified former President Trump from its 2024 primary ballot. On Tuesday, the court declared Trump ineligible for the White House under the U.S. Constitution's Insurrection Clause. The decision from a court whose justices are all appointed by Democratic governors marks the first time in history that Section 3 of, a four, of the 14th Amendment was used to disqualify a presidential candidate. The court's decision overturned a previous ruling from a district court judge. The court stayed its decision until January 4th or until the U.S. Supreme Court rules on the case. And out of concerns about holiday travel today with just four days before Christmas as millions prepare to travel by air, a massive storm is bearing down on the West Coast, which could have ripple effects across the country. Authorities have already issued the first evacuation warnings. Travel rush is on. Airports today are bracing for the busiest day of the season with nearly 49,000 planes in the air. There's a lot of people going in many different directions. Just got to bring your patience. The biggest problem, the weather. A slow moving storm could dump 10 inches of rain in parts of Southern California, potentially triggering mudslides and air travel delays that could impact the rest of the country. On the East Coast, neighborhoods are underwater days after a powerful storm slammed multiple states, killing six people. Some rivers in New Jersey are at major flood stage through tomorrow. 
Boats were needed to rescue people in Little Falls. We had to leave because our heat went out. So, you know, with the kids and I'm expecting we couldn't do it anymore. In Maine, several people rescued after a river overflowed its banks. It could be days before power is fully restored. Bad weather last year caused a staffing meltdown at Southwest Airlines. Just this week, the airline was hit with a record fine. It will now be required to give passengers a $75 voucher for any significant delays caused by the airline. You need to take care of your passengers, and if you don't, there will be consequences. We will hold you accountable. Security also a concern, with the TSA seizing a record number of guns. Agents at Reagan National outside Washington stopped a man with this loaded handgun. And at New York's LaGuardia Airport, 17 bullets were found hidden inside a diaper in a carry-on. Fines for firearm violations were recently increased and can now top $14,000 per violation. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Back in California, some evacuation warnings were already issued in Ventura County last night due to flood concerns. The 2024 numbers to ring in the new year arrived in Times Square yesterday. Standing at 7 feet tall, the numbers will officially light up the night sky. When the iconic Times Square ball drops at midnight, the numbers went on a coast-to-coast -to -coast tour that started in Los Angeles and made stops in Arizona and Philadelphia before finally arriving on Broadway Plaza. They will stay on the plaza until 11 a.m. Friday so that people can take photos with them after that. The numbers will be placed high atop Times Square where they will await the big New Year's Eve countdown. And that leads us to your viewer poll. You can scan the QR code right there on your screen to take part. We ask you, do you plan to stay up until midnight on New Year's Eve? Okay, let's take a look. 27, oh, not 26% of you say yes, you're staying up late on that. I think it's going into Monday morning, yeah. And then 74% of you say no, you do not. You probably maybe have work the next day. We want to keep hearing from you all. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote. And here are some of the top headlines you can read in the Port Lavaca wave. The Port Lavaca City Council updated the regulations of the nautical landing marina in their December 11th meeting. And high school students from Calhoun, Palacios, and Edna competed in a welding competition. Plus, the Port Lavaca Girl Scouts troop donated to the city's food pantry. You can read these stories and more at theportlavacawave.com. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. The time is now 6.38 on our Thursday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. Community members had a chance to gather over a free meal yesterday. 10 Americans are now freed in a prisoner exchange with Venezuela. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with more on the deal and what the U.S. gave to Venezuela. And coming up after the break, we'll take a look at your fishing forecast, that outage report as well, and coming up later on sunrise, we'll take a look at your travel forecast before the holidays. Well, good morning, Crossroads. If you're all waking up with us this morning, if you're just tuning in, look at a live look at Quero, where it's a little cloudy out there and a little chilly, more like a mild chilly out there this morning, starting out about 63 this morning. And I put Gonzales up there because that's the closest town to Quero, that is in Victoria. But with a dew point of 59, just a few degrees off of that temperature, you got an 89% humidity, so it's a little humid out there. So you might see a little bit of dew on your windshields, but we're not expecting any fog out there, especially, at least not in the Quero area, because you start seeing fog about 95% higher. But you might see some dew on your windshield, so you might want to use those wipers to uh, drive out there this morning. But could be a nice day overall, and you know, especially along the coast, where they're not going to see as many showers out there. Give, make it a good day to go fishing today. Take a look at your fishing forecast. We've got high tides are going to be at 12:16 p.m. this afternoon. Another one's going to be at 8:30 p.m. this evening. Low tides we just had one a couple hours ago, with another at 4:47 p.m. this afternoon, just before sunset, uh, a couple hours before sunset. But winds will be about 10 knots out in the east, making your base and seas pretty smooth and only about two to three feet, with a water temperature of 63. And with that water temperature and the southerly flow, going to keep us in the 70s for the next few days. But pollen today, low pollen. To for the trees and grass and ragweed are none, but it can stick around in the low 70s for the rest of this week and weekend with some showers on the way. And we'll take a look at that more in just a few more moments. Back to Carolina. Thank you, Parker. A high stakes prisoner swap is bringing 10 Americans back home to the U.S. after being held prisoner in Venezuela. The White House agreed to the exchange, which includes the return of a close ally of Venezuela's president and for the South American nation to hand over a wanted fugitive to the U.S. This morning, a first look at six wrongfully detained Americans en route to a Texas Army base after being freed in a prisoner exchange deal with Venezuela. 
The White House National Security Advisor posting this image online and welcoming the men home. California businessman Savoy Wright have been held in Venezuela since October. So much gratitude for, for the moment, for the United States of America, for, for all of you, and, and for the, the opportunity to come home. Los Angeles attorney Avon Hernandez heading home after being detained in Venezuela since March of 2022, accused of being a spy. I want to thank President Biden because I know he made a difficult decision that will uh, have a lot of pressure on him on Capitol Hill, but he got us home and we're with our families. Senate Republican Marco Rubio slamming the exchange as a disgraceful decision. The Biden administration brokering the deal with Venezuela. The White House agreeing to grant clemency to Alex Saab, who faced money laundering charges. President Nicolas Maduro embracing his close ally at the presidential palace. In exchange for Saab, Venezuela sent back 10 Americans, plus fugitive Malaysian defense contractor Leonard Glenn Francis. Francis, also known as Fat Leonard, escaped U.S. custody last year. Francis pleaded guilty to the $35 billion scheme, which used prostitutes, luxury travel, and cash to bribe U.S. naval officers into steering lucrative contracts to his companies. As part of that deal, President Biden says President Maduro also gave assurances he would allow fair elections. Biden also saying lifted sanctions could snap back if Venezuela doesn't uphold its end of the deal. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Community members had a chance to gather over a free meal yesterday at HEB's annual Feast of Sharing event. It all happened at the Victoria Community Center and they featured a live band activities for the family and St. Nick even stopped by for an appearance. Thomas and Margarita Molina say they take this time to appreciate the little things like fellowship in a tasty meal. Well, it's a good to bring the community together and to show everybody the joy and the happiness. It's a good thing with this. And thankful. And thankful, yes. Sure. Just sharing the joy and the, the food, uh, uh, what the good Lord has, has provided. provided for us. So we take uh, everything into consideration. Don't take it for granted because this is a lovely thing. Local agencies like the Victoria Fire Department and the Police Department volunteered at the event alongside veterans, local boy and Girl Scout troops and community members. This year marked the 33rd year that this has taken place. Organizers say their numbers have grown each year with about 5,000 plates served all free of charge to the community. And here's a look at some of the top headlines you'll find in the Quero record. Quero Health donates to CISD students and Cowboy Claus delivers gifts to over 28 children in Yorktown. You can read these stories and more at DeWittCountyToday.com. The time is now 645 on your Thursday morning. Still to come on 25 News Now Sunrise, we hear from our friends at Victoria College. Well, good morning, Crossroads. I guess a couple of us saw some showers yesterday. Let's take a look at your rainfall totals from yesterday. It's solid about almost a, almost a half inch around Port Lavaca yesterday, just southwest of Port Lavaca, actually, before I took that reading. But uh, about a quarter inch up there in Warden and around Bay City as well. But for the rest of us, saw about a tenth of an inch yesterday. Now, if we didn't see any rain yesterday and you did want to see rain, good news is we're going to probably see some more today and tomorrow and tomorrow after that and the day after that as well. Take a look at that. Uh, take a look at the live radar right now. Not really too much going out there right now. We just had a couple showers that just dissipated up just north of us here the crossroads that were going into Quero, Yorktown and Houseville. But it looks like there's a dissipated. But if uh, don't worry, don't fret not fret not if you think uh, we're not going to get any showers because take a look at your future track here. Think of those showers going to become a little bit more widespread going into around noon time and especially into the afternoon hours. As you can see here, lots of things kind of blowing up here, especially on the west side of really the western half of our uh, of our kind of area here. But going into tonight and to this evening, we're thinking we might see some light showers overnight as well with maybe some drizzle as well. I don't really see drizzle too often. It's kind of a cool little feature with the rain. But tomorrow, though, even better shot at seeing some showers as we're going to see that system approaching out of the Rockies right now. As you can see, this that weak low just came out of the Rockies, going to slowly, slowly push east northeast towards the towards the Great Lakes, and it's going to dissipate up there. But that's going to make way for our next system. This is going to be the one that's coming out of the Pacific. It's actually an upper level low, dumping a lot of rain over there in California right now as we speak. Actually, up to 10 inches was what I saw was the last reading. But we're going to get a warm front. It's going to warm up us, us, us up nicely on Sunday ahead of that showers and cool front ahead of your Christmas and uh, Kwanzaa Day holidays. And we'll take a look at that in just a few more moments. But Carolina, I hear you have a guest, so let's take a look at that.
I'm now joined by Bobby Gubriel. He's the Director of Counseling, Advising, and Support Services at Victoria College. Welcome, Bobby. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Welcome, and we want to learn more about this Super Saturday coming up. Victoria College has that set for January 6th. That's right, yeah. Victoria College is excited to host our January 6th Super Saturday event. Uh, we do this every semester because uh, we know our students not always can come between the hours of 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. So we try to have an event every semester for Saturday so that way our non-traditional students can come and visit with us and be able to get registered. We have our entire building open from admissions, financial aid, all the way to registration. If the students need to get tested uh, for our admissions testing, we can also do that too. We start that a little bit earlier though at 8.30 in our testing center, but then after that they can come over to the, to the Welcome Center and get registered for classes. What else do they need to have with them? Let's say maybe you haven't been going to school for a couple of years. What are the basic things that you need? Really, they don't need to bring anything with them. We'll have everything ready. We'll, the applications are all online. If they have ID, if they have their Social Security card with them, they might need that. Mm -hmm. But we don't need to have that with us on the first day. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, your ID and then maybe your social, but y'all can take care of the rest from there. And that's correct. Yeah, kind we'll of do find everything. out if there's financial aid opportunities. That's right. That's part, of the, that's part of the day as well. So we'll have them sit down with the financial aid counselor, be able to do the FAFSA application, see if we can't get them some financial aid assistance to be able to pay for their school. That's such a big help. There are so many families that struggle to fill out that FAFSA. It is. It's one of the toughest things for our students that they say, but we want to make sure that that's as easy as possible. So we'll have our counselors available for them. Beyond that, too, we'll also have scholarship opportunities opportunities for them. So if we oh, want wow. to make sure that we're looking for all the different ways that we can help pay for this for their ventures. And it's such a great time. It's at the beginning of a new year. Perhaps our viewers have some educational resolutions in mind because it doesn't hurt to have an associates. That's right. No, there's, we have several different pathways, not only associates. We have one year certificates. We even have short term training that we want to showcase at this event. So we want to make sure that every student, whether they have those aspirations now or later, that they have the opportunity to come off Monday through Friday on those Saturdays whenever they maybe have a day off or so. And it's like never too late. That's right. It's never too late. We hope to be here. For, uh, we hope to be able to support them on those days at any time. Well, let's go ahead and remind our viewers about the event and what time it starts. It starts at 10 a.m., but you may want to get there early if you're thinking about getting registered for the first time that morning. And it goes until 2 p.m. That's correct. And it's all going to take place at the Student Services Building on the VC campus there on Red River Street. That's correct. Thank you. Well, I'm excited to hear what your enrollment numbers turn out to be this spring semester. And it's such a great thing that y'all are doing for the community with these Super Saturdays. Well, thank you. Yeah, we are too. We're very excited to see our spring semester get started. We're excited about the numbers, the new classes that we have. So, yeah, thank you for having us. My pleasure. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. And don't go anywhere. Coming up, news to know before you go. Eagle Pass is facing an unprecedented migrant surge. Eagle Pass observed record-breaking levels of illegal crossings on Monday, with more than 4,000 migrants crossing into the area in a single day. An additional 4,000 migrants are in U.S. Customs and Border Protection custody. Border Patrol agents have described it as the worst migrant surge they've ever experienced in Eagle Pass. Eagle Pass was experiencing an average of more than 2,000 illegal crossings per day before that number doubled on Monday. Customs Border Patrol checkpoints across the state were forced to close and divert manpower to the area. The Transactional Records Access Clearinghouse says as of November, the backlog for migrant immigration hearings topped 3 million pending cases. A federal judge has blocked a California law that would restrict the concealed carry of a gun in certain sensitive places across the state. Those sensitive places include parks, sporting venues, and educational institutions. In a Wednesday ruling, the U.S. District Judge said the provisions of the bill that were being challenged by gun rights groups unconstitutionally deprives concealed carry holders from their rights to carry a handgun. Plaintiffs in the challenge include the California Rifle and Pistol Association, 
and the Gun Owners of America. In a statement, California Governor Gavin Newsom said the complaint and ruling defies common sense. In the meantime, the state's attorney general plans to appeal the federal judge's decision. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is back in D.C. after a multi-day trip to the Middle East. Before heading back, excuse me, before heading back to Washington, D.C. on Wednesday, Secretary Austin visited the USS Gerald R. Ford, making a stop to meet service members at the aircraft carrier ship. He thanked some 4,000 sailors for sacrificing their time during the holidays to keep peace across the Middle East. On Monday, Secretary Austin visited Israel, where he discussed a new phase in the war in Gaza. Whew. He also traveled to Qatar on Tuesday and later made a stop in Bahrain. Texas flew out over 120 immigrants from El Paso to Chicago Tuesday as part of the governor's policy of transporting migrants to Democratic-led cities. The flight comes after officials reportedly cracked down on migrant buses coming from Texas. Read the story by the Texas Tribune on our website, crossroadstoday.com. I'm a little short of breath this morning. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our forecast with Parker. Parker, it looks like uh, some UFOs out there. <laughs> yeah, look at these little breaks in the clouds. They look like a little circle, little UFOs kind of touch down. Kind of a little cool here, but the, a little weird out there. But starting out a little bit chilly out there, not too bad, a little mild out there. 61 starting out your day here in the crossroads, but we're expecting maybe see a couple ice weighted showers out there today as we take a look at your future track here. I think maybe a couple of showers might become more widespread going into the afternoon today, especially going into tonight where we're thinking might see some drizzle and some light rain overnight tonight but that's not the big talk. The big talk is this upper level out in the Pacific, which is going to slowly, slowly come our way, bringing us a good shot at some rain coming our way ahead of your holidays, even on Thanksgiving or not Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day and on your Kwanzaa. <laughs> I love that you're including Kwanzaa. Of in there, course, Parker. Include Kwanzaa. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us and please follow us on our YouTube channel Crossroads today and join us tonight on 25 News Down at 5, 6 and 10. We'll see you tomorrow morning.